I told them down there at Philadelphia, they had, I had a bottle of that. They brought me another one. I drunk about part of it, you know, and it was sitting there, and I asked Paul to get me another. So I think Gabe brought one, and Paul brought one. I said, boy, you want me to preach a long time today. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. And uh, good to see everybody. We wonder if anybody has anything on the hearts or question or anything that from our previous Bible studies or last week or anything that uh, this maybe is upon your heart. Uh, because we had stopped there at uh, at, at 19. We stopped dead at 17, 18, so we pick up on 19. Proverbs. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, 19. I've been gone working with stuff and been out of town. Right. Sure. <laughs> Teach you tired of people. Don't <laughs> <laughs> pray for me. So anything. All right. So we had to... <laughs> Talked about 17, 18 last time. So 19, she layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. So she uh, layeth her hands to the spindle, her hands on the distaff. Anybody know what the spindle and the distaff is? This staff, of course, is uh, in the weaving process, the instrument that uh, holds with the unprocessed flax or wool. It's what holds the unprocessed. So if you look at it, and then, of course, the, the spindle is where it begins to start in the uh, weaving. Bringing it together. Yeah, bringing it together. Okay? So the distaff is, uh, is, in other words, she's, uh, she layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. So in other words, when you, now we gotta look back and she, the church, she's gotta take hold of the, uh, knows how to bring those that, uh, uh, that steal flax. I mean, unprocessed, I guess, in the process of the flax and uh, the fibers and things. When you look at it in the spiritual sense, which flax makes linen and the wool, you know, into the fibers. And it's un this distaff holds the uh, unprocessed. In other words, it's, it comes when it's, uh, you know, how to get the wool and they, uh, I can't remember exactly cart it, pull it, whatever, and then they bring it into the uh, distaff, you know, in the, it's short fibers, you know, it, but it begins to link together. And it comes on, and, and then it's on to the, uh, the distaff, and then the spindle begins to feed it into the uh, weaving machine, or, uh, you know, the machine that- Spindle speed it, and brings all your other pieces together. together. Yeah. And it turns it and it starts. Begins to weave it like together, that. cord it together. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So the so she can hold in in the spiritual sense, if you're looking at the the way in comparison of the natural, that the fibers and stuff or the people, the uh, the learning, she knows how to take <coughs> hold and begin to process to teach and to begin to uh, give out the information for the weaving process, in other words, to make you stronger, uh, you know, as it says, a two-fold cord, you know, it's stronger. You know, if you got one single thread, break it. The more you start waving it together, and then if you got three-fold, if you got two and then another one goes on, you can't hardly break it, okay? It's a whole lot stronger. So it begins that process of then making the garment, you know, 
but it's the beginning of it. So, young Christians, okay, or you know, on it, uh, uh, because it's not, it's no longer flax, uh, it's still wool, but it's still in the processing form. But flax is a, how would we say it, a, a plant that when it's beaten and so on like that and shredded and it becomes then into fibers and then those fibers come onto the distaff. If you got them, you pull them and they come onto the distaff. And so you're starting into the process. It's no longer um, in its former state. Okay, so sit, think about it as when we come out from the world, we're not completely, uh, it's sort of like a little old song, God's still working on me, all right? So, uh, you know, you, you've come from the spot of fibers uh, because, and she takes, layeth her hands to the spindle in her head, uh, and so she knows how, and not afraid to do it. Why? Because she has the wisdom and the knowledge because she is the bride of Christ. She is the uh, virtuous woman. You know everything that she, the church is going to do to be able to, into the processing of these spiritual fibers and uh, and so on like that. And you know it's sort of like uh, uh, you we we hear an old saying. You know ever you know this so and so whether it agitated you. Or or ever what would be good or bad, but you say, we say every fiber of our being. You ever hear that? You know, I was I was frustrated with every in every fiber of my being and all this stuff. So you know, we we understand that that's a, a metaphor. You know, even no matter where we look, linking it to God's word or not, we know that's a metaphor. I mean, even the world will say that. They're really distraught or whatever, and the, the fibers of their beings is about, you know, shot or whatever. But she layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. And so uh, uh, it, it's in the spinning, it's in the process of telling. Once you've got past, you no, you're no longer flax. I guess you'd say you're becoming the the thing that got what's needed, and she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. So let's look into Ephesians four and twenty eight. You know, it's the love of the church too. That, yeah. That takes that young Christian and feeds them the good bread and takes that flax and stuff that we all, and that's what we're doing here tonight, taking the flax and putting it hopefully with the spirit of, of, of the word and putting it together to make us a stronger core, mm -hmm. not only doing by me, but doing by you and every other Christian that's here to make the church, that we, but not the building, but the church has to see that we do progress and get stronger bind together and maybe not together together but bind together with myself through the spirit and the word and with God and that's three that you cannot break at all and we hold on to that no matter you know and it's easy to say man we're not going through problems and trials it's easy to say hold on to the hand you know Lord but you know whenever I'm throwing down there and I'm in the mud sometimes it, you know it's 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 rough to, to, to say that and if I'm not going through your problem I don't understand what you're doing but I understand my problems yeah. right and you we hope we all like you're saying you know the communication say that what you're talking about you have God the Father God the Son God the Holy Ghost but you, you hope that I have the same communication yeah. in the same way and then we're together we're stronger yeah. and then the next one's stronger and the next one's if we're all in agreement but this one here it'll it'll I guess to me it will help a little bit. For, for me, it helps me. Let him that st stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. So she she layeth her hands to the spindle, to the distaff. She's helping 
uh, get those things. And then the next verse, it says she stre uh, stretches her hand out to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth hands to the needy. So she, she gives the advice for the change. As Paul told the church of Ephesus, let him that steal uh, uh, let him that stole steal no more. There's got to be the change. We have to preach, teach, and live the change. Okay? We have to see not only, uh, you know whether you are or not, people, whether people, there's some things that you, do, that you do or not do that people do not ever, ever see. But then there are things that you do or that is needful that people see you do it. Okay? They need to see you worship the Lord in spirit and truth. They need you to see uh, they need uh, to see you uh, doing things uh, for, you know, when they see the love for the needy. In other words, uh, the change has come. In other words, you look at let him that stole steal no more. Well, you could you could um, suggest that the reason they stole is that they needed it, but not always. But Paul said, "Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor." So if we are trying to get something without the labor, you see, uh, uh, on it, and then. Uh, in a sense, we're kind of lazy, and we say, "Well, we'll let somebody else work for it, and I'll take it." You know, but uh, but let him, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. Um, it's sort of like this. I'll let somebody else study the Word of God. You didn't tell me about it. Yeah. But what about our stuff? What about as Paul told Timothy? study the show he didn't say I'll study it Timothy and then I'll give it to him. He Paul told Timothy he said study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth okay so you know it's not only just as in monetary things that here's Paul's telling the church of Ephesus but it's also those things that you know um, in other words uh we could preach after somebody else, but what if somebody else's preaching is not accurate? It sounds good, but have we studied it to find out whether or not that it is truth, that it is within the realms of the Holy Spirit and the Word? So him, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good. Okay, so we need, and so she's, she looks at the poor, Okay, she stretched out a hand to the poor, not afraid to uh, be able to give in in the love and and not only you know it, and it but it also includes monetary things. If we see whether it be a pot of soup beans or twenty dollar bill, I mean you know whichever way somebody had to fix the beans and buy the beans and so on like that to give it, but. You know, but or you you know you see it. So he said, if you see you, uh, a brother in need, both ways, okay, spiritually and monetarily. If we, because it's pretty hard to come to church hungry, or uh, if it's pretty hard to get here if problems has come up and they don't have the fuel to get here with, or they don't have the vehicle to get here with. We can say, come to church, come to church. And they say, well, I would if I had a car. I would if I had the means or the money and so on. You all know what I'm talking about. So uh, working with these hands, those things, which is good that he, may, that he may have to give to him that needeth. So when, when people's in spiritual need, we need to labor within God's word and communication with God to be able to give to him to, or the, them, him or her, the things that which they need. Also, but we, if we shut up our bowels of compassion, how dwells the love of God in us? If we won't help even in the 
let's say the monetary things that, that is seen I mean you, you don't have to be seen to be doing it but what I'm saying is that you see that they have a need and so you you try the, the best that you can to help feel, fulfill that need so she stretched out her hand to the poor yea she reaches forth her hands to the needy so that's the love she's a virtuous woman the church and that's not just as individuals sometimes it comes to us as individuals but what about are we not as one body <clears throat> are we not the, you know and so she gives to uh, stretch forth to the needy and the greatest need okay is salvation the greatest need is when they're young as Christians not in age but young Christians that they need the gospel the true gospel preached I know we've said it many times me and Kathy's talked about it and I know you all we've talked about it here and stuff and people have related to it how much further would we be if somebody would have told us back back when back a few years ago you know the some of the things that we now study here that I never heard studied before. You know, how, how much further would we be here tonight talking about stuff if we knew it back then? So, you know, but when we, because then if we see that needy that is that we're able to fulfill that gap or the questions and of things that people have today that are a lot of the reasons why I see some of these programs on TV that that uh, people are quite that, that they just don't believe God, they don't believe in the Bible, they don't believe you know churches there's no need and all this kind of stuff. So and it's because we have lacked because we tried to explain things way back then or had them told to us and we believed them because we thought they knew you know of things and then as Kathy says, well I can't blame them. What about me? Why did we? Why did we not know? Why did we not pick it up and look at it and study it? Because we were dependent. Satisfied too. Yeah. But she's not afraid to, you know, straight reach your hands to the needy. I think I saw on this. Why is she doing this? She knows there's a need, and she's doing something. She's making a garment. Mm, that's what I was going to get into here in okay. a few minutes. She's what? making a garment, and that goes back to Genesis. Adam dressed the garden. Pardon. He had, it's already been prepared. What we have to do is know how to use it. So I, there were so many places I wanted to go, but I marked quite a few because it's so prevalent of how deep the scriptures go. <coughs> Let's start off with uh, Matthew 25 and go down uh, to 35. For I was a hungry because she's giving instructions. She said, I've got everything you need. If you're hungry, I'll feed you. If you're naked, I'll clothe you. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick. You visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. The church has got the purpose. So now, let's go to um, Mark 10 and 49. Because there's th something that the world has to do also. They've got a garment on, but it's still going to end up, they're going to show their nakedness. Because we have to understand what garment we wear. So Mark 10 and 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. The old song, 
two coats laid before me. Mm -hmm. Which one are we going to choose? But, I mean, you look at it. He was blind. He was lacking something. But he want, when you want to find mm -hmm. out, God will say, you know, uh, be of good mm -hmm. comfort. I love that. Be of mm -hmm. good comfort. God's going to help me. So then, let's go to... Um, uh, let's go to Corinthians because for Second Corinthians five tells you how we must be clothed upon. You got you got to have the covering. The garment has to be there. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. And if so being that being clothed we shall not be found naked. So, and God in Hebrews, there's so many other places, God said everybody was naked before him. He's going to look and see if we have that covering that Christ provided. Because and she's doing this She's getting it ready. We don't wait and say, you know, the, we're prepared right now to give you the gospel. The church is prepared right now. If you're hungry, I'm going to feed you. And that's what Christ, when he was, John was in prison, why he said those very things. And John was comforted with that. He said, I know now. Because that's what all the gospel is about. We're to clothe and feed and get them ready. We're supposed to have something that when a preacher's preaching, he should be giving out meat and making a person strong. So all these things are here. And so the church is always ready and prepared because who gave it to her to prepare? She got her merchandise from afar. And if you look at it, the Pharisees and the scribes were, in a sense, giving people a garment of salvation, they thought, but they were still naked in the eyes of God. So when we look at this merchandise and we see that in Revelation, different places, they're buying and selling and they're putting clothing up on people that will never be that linen righteousness of the church. So, I mean, you can just go through all the scriptures. It's so many that you just want to pick all of them. But if we keep that in mind, what garment do we want? Do we want the one that's going to give us eternal life and eternal salvation? Uh, it, it's, you know, when we look and we see, talk about people coming in, you know, or the Word of God will talk about people, <coughs> you know, when you when when was when were we naked, you know? Well, uh, you know, without clothing, in a sense. Well, let's look at that. Uh, spiritually, what if people come in this coming Sunday? Now they got the finest garments that ever was. But boy, they 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 need some clothes on. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. sure. Then we as a church need to be able to discern that and know, not looking on the outward. It doesn't make any difference what people say. Well, you know, hey, be a dober, be a dober. It's cost you a lot today. I mean, you know, my goodness, you know. But you know, but we look down upon it because we think it's hillbilly or whatever. But say bib dobras compared to a suit. Well, you know, we, we can't look at the, what what the people come in with, and a lot of times we're so busy about how people are dressed, especially the lost. Well, do we not expect them to dress like the world? Yeah. But should we not? But we're wanting the world to clean up on the outside before they ever get saved. The how dare you come with that garment on looking like that? We can't get we can we let our our carnal mind get distracted with those things rather than giving them the clothing that they need. As Kathy was talking about here, she's ready to give those clothes. That cloth that rich linen garment. You know, ready to spin it out. It's ready to be told, this is what you need to do. But go back to, to the garden. God made them skins and clothed them. Now, they 
that's a big spiritual reading too. When and uh, when you get your mind and starts rolling, if you go to Jude, there's another part of it, like I was saying, in Jude uh, uh, 22, because the church, you're going to find she has love, she has compassion, and uh, well, let's go 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. There is a garment that's spotted by the flesh. We're in a fleshly mind, a fleshly way, a, a, a depending upon our carnal thoughts. And that's a garment that's got spots on it. He said the church has to be without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Now that's a pretty strong statement. But if you go then into Hebrews 1 and 10, we're going to see that garment was the same from the beginning to the end. Nothing has changed with the Word of God. It's that we've got to realize how to read this Word of God the way He wants it read. In uh, Hebrews 1 and 10, And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. Remember, we're clothed upon from heaven. They shall perish, but thou shalt remainest. They shall all wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. All of us had to make a change of garment. Christ always was without sin. He had no spot, no blemish. There was nothing that Christ needed to change. We have to change the garment. And if you look at that and go back to the Garden of Eden, you look at it. It's when we get spotted by the flesh, our garment is dirty. And Christ didn't want it to be that way. He made the church, she, she's pure in the linen righteousness, as Revelation talks about, because she's been clothed upon by him. He has, he's without spot, he's without blemish, he's holy, he's pure, the word is good, everything is good with Christ. Is that the plan of salvation? Plan of the salvation. Gar the garment, the clean garment, is yeah. the plan of salvation? It is salvation. Mm -hmm. It is. Because remember, Christ is the head of the church. We're just the body. And remember Christ, even the garment that he wore, it was without sin. It means that he had covered it. It was all the same. It was it was a garment without sin. I mean, it's just, it was the same from, from the beginning to the end. Couldn't separate. Yeah, that's it. You couldn't separate. They tried to, but they couldn't. And it's all but, spiritual meanings, yeah. deep spiritual meanings. And whenever Christ was a babe, they wrapped him in swollen clothes. You know, those the blood clothes wiped him up and cleaned him and laid him and wrapped him in swollen clothes. You know, tell you what he put on my wall. That's that's that robe right there. That's that's his blood that's covered all of us, all yeah. of all of these trials. And it's that righteousness that is laying there. Swallowing clothes, wrap me up in it, and put me right there. Revelation 19, I believe I said this Sunday, I think. Because Adam and Eve saw that they were naked. Yeah. You know, and they had to be clothed. They tried to cover themselves with. James, where is it uh, in Ezekiel? Where is it? Where he saw that you were naked and clothed you, saw that thou was in thy blood. 16 Ezekiel 16 uh, Revelation 19:13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and that's it that's it right there and his name is called the word of God remember yeah. I, I preached the, I had that in my message Sunday so it goes right to the beginning it does yeah it's all the 
it's all the skin, the things that God made for us, you know, uh, the clothing for, you know, that we have to have on, be a part, we're, we're the, we're the church, in other words, I'm trying to get it out that, you know, we're bone of his bone, I had this Sunday too, we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, so we're part of him we must be, eat his flesh drink his blood be a part of him and cr we we got to be the the church which is the body of christ okay so then as as tim said that it's the garment that was without seam you know it was it's where that body's in that okay the plan of salvation, you see. Uh, how that it's, we have to be, I asked this question at church Sunday, and I've asked it before, I'll probably ask it here. Uh, when, you know, to, to try to help people to get to see the spiritual side. When you got saved, was you washed in the blood? Well, sure. Well, did somebody get a five gallon bucket of blood and dump on you? Do and I said here at the church down there where I was preaching, I said we don't keep a store of blood back there. So we'll say that's spiritual. We know that Christ shed His blood, and it represents that it covers us just as that garment covers us, just as the Word we must have it, and we look at it. But we will use it spiritually, but we can't look at some of those others spiritually. What you? What was you in Ezekiel sixteen? Well, all the garment, all the yeah. broidered edges and all the wonderful things that you know, he saw us when we were naked and polluted in our blood, you see, and he covers us, he, you know and, and the church needs to be ready to give that message of the covering of the cloth of the linen don't oh, yeah. trust in your own view yeah yeah Sweet savor, and thus it was, said the Lord. And of course, 
you know, we see the woes, we see all these things, but go to 32, which this is the wife of God. The church is the wife. She has a husband, and we're going to see he trusted her if she's, you know, preaching and teaching what, what he wants her to do. But as a wife, thou committed adultery, which take with strangers instead of her husband. That's how you can commit adultery and fornication. And then you look at that, and we see that all the way through the Word of God. The church must know who the husband or who is the head of the church. And then over to 38, and I will judge thee as women that break, that, uh, that break wedlock. When he says, I'm married to you, you don't break that bond. There's no divorcement in this thing. And the understanding of the spiritualness of that is the church. She, she, the man that preaches must have the husband of one, be the husband of one wife. That's the church. Can't be, a, can't be of something else. That looks like a quiet matter right there. No. Do what? That looks like a quiet matter right there. Oh, it does. People, because we've not understood it. Understand it. We think of it as, for you it's coed. For me, it's Kathy, and the, and the deacons. For Daryl, it's Sharon. And that's all that it is. We can't get past that. No. We can't look past We can't go and look and see, you know, and, and, it, and it throws a whole lot into that as far as qualifications for things. Oh, yeah. It throws a whole lot in there as far as once in grace, always in grace. That, you know, hey, they was married, and then God said, I'll tear down those high places and all those things like that. You know, if you leave me if you you know because we're married to Christ we're the bride and boy that that tears males all to pieces men it tears them all to pieces you know if they don't have the spiritual understanding that he's talking about that no matter what gender you are you know, I know it's a big gender generation thing but what gender you are you know what God does not look at that well, let's, I think when we say something, we should always go to Scripture because we don't know who's listening to this that's not heard it. So, and you know, I'm very strong. I always say Scripture. So, Second Corinthians 11. Would to God you bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I've espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrected from the simplicity that is in Christ that is in Christ. For he that cometh <coughs> preacheth another Jesus. And there's a lot preaching another Jesus to the church. Paul was warning them that the serpent, just like in the garden, would come to the church and preach a different message. <coughs> say, thou shalt surely not die. Yeah. But you can't you can't preach anything. And then let's go to Isaiah fifty four. I'll just read five. For my make for thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. But look at the Pharisees and scribes. They said we have Abraham, we have David, we have Moses, but Moses, Abraham, and David knew who was the head of the church. They were, that. it is not me. John was, a, he is preferred before me. He knew I'm preaching, I'm not that one, but I'm a preacher of the one to come. All you all that preach are just preaching about him. When you start preaching about yourself, you're in big, big trouble. Okay, anything else? I always, uh, I know Kevin probably know what I'm talking about, but it was said the other day, I think it was uh, kind of passed over and watched a little bit of it. <coughs> but let me ask a question. Did, did the old saints of old, the old prophets, and stuff like that. Did they did they know did did they know the truth behind the end? 
of the coming of the Lord. They knew it. What is that? What's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, they knew it. They had the insight. Mm -hmm. There's a lot today says that that they just didn't understand what's going on today. They knew it just as much as we're just living it. Yeah. You know, we're we're just in this end time and we see a whole lot of confusion of how the end time things are preached and taught and been taught for years and got people's minds confused and stuff like that but the old prophets and stuff you know if if they knew that Jesus was coming and knew that he was going to be born of a virgin through Isaiah and all they knew that those things were it's it's not that they did not spiritually understand those things they knew it was going to take place they knew the messiah was coming and they were told how to recognize it and some did but the majority did not but it still come to pass there you know that's the reason so many of the pharisees and stuff didn't recognize it and denied him you know they didn't know who he was then then they didn't want to know who he was it was going to you know hurt them so bad uh, spiritually, I guess, or how their status and so on like that. And that's the same way today. And monetarily. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way it is today. We don't want to see the spiritual insight because we have to have a change. We will make a change. You know. So she's, because, you know, she left her hands to the spindle and, and her hands hold the distaff the uh, unspun flax and wool and fiber and seeing, recognizing she's, you know, how to produce these clothes that when people come in that, uh, you know, that desiring to be clothed upon, as, as she read, you know, Peter said, though this tabernacle be dissolved, you know, but we desire, we have a home in the heaven of being desired to be clothed upon. That if, if people have a, uh, we should recognize uh, to the point that we know uh, if somebody needs some spiritual clothes, if they're lost. In other words, we can simplify it and say if they come to church and they're lost, they don't have the garment on. They've still got the old garment. You've got to lay aside that garment and put on the new, that first Adam. That first man had to put on the second Adam. He had to put on, you know, in Corinthians 15. What is that? First or second Corinthians 15. That, you know, the, the, the first Adam was of the earth earthly. The second Adam was the Lord from glory, that spiritual thing. So those, all those people in the beginning had to have on, put on Christ. Because that's where the songs come from. That old robe, you know, put, take off the old robe and put on the new. And so 21, are, are we through with 17 or uh, 19 and 20? <clears throat> are everybody satisfied with that? She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. <coughs> okay, that uh, bloodline. That lineage, all of her household. You say, well, you mean all she wants to do is give them one color? <laughs> you know, all she, all the garment that she's got says scarlet looking color. Well, that's, you know, that's what she needs. That's what we all need to have on. You know, she, yeah. because she's not, a, she's not afraid of the snow, the cold for her household. She's not afraid of the world. She's not afraid to be able to tell you the church should not be able be afraid. Even though this world is trying to tell us that we're wrong, that there's nothing to it, that they want to do away with us, we should not be afraid of the snow, the cold, the opposition. We should be able to still be able to tell them how to get clothed, how to be clothed upon. For all her household are clothed with scarlet, so that everyone that's in a in her household, okay, this virtuous woman. The church, the bride of Christ, in the house, the house of God, which house are ye if we will continue? It's what Hebrews 3 and 9 or 10, something like that or whatever. I don't know. It's, I know it's in Hebrews 3. 
but who's but Christ is over his house, whose house are ye if we continue with the confidence unto the end? We can remain in the house of faith, household of faith, in the house of God, and as we've said many times. I know there's nothing wrong referring this to the, let's go down to the house of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with referring to going to church. But we know this is not the containment or the dwelling place of God, even though God, by the Holy Spirit, can come by and visit us, but this is not. We know that this, have, and plenty of churches have been destroyed, in, in the, you know, and before. Uh, but it's, it's us. It's the, the body of Christ. It's her that's been down through all of time. It's that bride. And we all become many members but of one body. Okay? <clears throat> She's not afraid of the snow for her household. All right? Those that's... We, we used to used to be an old saying. People say, and I guess it's still some people say it. You know, somebody gets saved and they say they joined the church. Well, that's a, that's a good thing. You know, on it's a good saying and stuff. I don't know if it's said a whole lot anymore. You know, a lot of people say they got saved or whatever, but they joined the church. Well, if you're truly saved, you become a part. You become a, a part of this body, this bride of Christ. No matter who you are, you become a part of her. For all of her household are clothed with scarlet, that vesture dipped in blood, that. Uh, Royalty. Swaddling clothes, you know, those type of things. Go ahead. I said the royalty. I mean, it's basically relying on royalty. So. Yeah. You become part of him. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything. It's 10 minutes after 8, so do we want to stop on 21 and pick up the other ones next round? I hear the question on the snow. I wonder what that, I didn't really understand the snow. Um, I think, to me, afraid of the snow. yeah, I've not searched out the part. I know uh, Job talks about the snow. You know, we know it's cold, you know. Problems, trials, it's, it's cold hearted. Winter. Yeah. Garbage. You can't, you don't have snow in July. I mean, you know, for us, I mean, you know, it'd be a, the thing. You know what I'm saying? It's Matthew 24. Go ahead and put it. Uh, it's the... Uh, time of winter. Uh, Matthew 24 is showing us that there comes a time of summer and winter shall it be, which is in the book of Joel and Isaiah. And when you see what happens in those times, there's a time of the warmth and there's a time of cold, the coldness of the heart, so to speak, that you won't let... Because the church in like Revelation 20, I believe it is, She's clothed with the sun and the moon's under her feet, all that. And the sun of righteousness, where she gets her warmth from all these things. But in Matthew 24, um, and because this is the woe if you're with child at this time. If you don't bring forth the child, you know, you just with child. You don't know how to bring the child forth. There's a big message in that. But woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. But pray you that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So this time of cold comes, and we see that the hearts of men grow wicked. We see it in the time of, uh, throughout the Word of God, that the heart gets cold. They, they don't want this love of God in, sometimes in the church. But we also see, Job says, hast thou entered into the treasures of the stone? Even though I see the world in a wicked time right now, you know what I do know? There's still going to be some good things happen. Because God, sometimes when you look and you see truth revealed, it astonishes people. And they start seeing how ugly some of the truth is. And they'll start thinking, I don't want this. This is what they're wanting. They're wanting to do away with the little babies. They really show the things of how, what they're really, how far they'll go. And sometimes people say when they see that they'll go even farther, they'll start thinking, hey, there's something drastically wrong. So it's been quite a while and I asked God, and I said, just let people see the truth. And truth is being revealed. Now, what we do with it, 
is would you look at how cold hard we know everything because when I look at a person and I see like that woman we saw in the news about the abortion thing and your thought is boy she's very cold hearted and that's the time for the snow that's the time of winter and boy it's a cold time right now hmm. but the church not afraid She's got clothing. If I if I prepare for it, I've clothed. I've got food. I've got a candle because it's dark. Because we're there's, in a cold world. There's a little three letter word for all her household are clothed with scarlet, mm -hmm. the covering <clears throat> of Christ, the covering of the blood. You know the the thing. So I saw know. it as well. Is it could be as the season of our trials because you know. The season. Because you know, there's we're not always going to be up high on the mountain and being, you know, rejoicing. There's going to be times that we're going to be in a season of coldness. We're going to people, yeah, yeah. People. Paul mm -hmm. and Bill had to flee out of Judea, but uh, then you still have your faith. Yeah, you, and you're you'll not be afraid right. because you've been there before, and there's a lesson in it. You learn and you grow, and then. Lord brings you up because of your faith and your faith in the Lord. Um, I just when I <coughs> she asked that question, you first read it. That's what I got out of it: the snow, the coldness, the season. Um, and know. that's it. I mean, I we cut. are not going to encounter anything that our brothers and sisters didn't go through. Yeah. Yeah. It may be a little bit different, like you know how they were. Chased after, or this or that, or persecuted, but persecution came mm -hmm. because He'd already forewarned us of what the times on earth are going to be. As I know, James said last week, um, I forget, I'm just paraphrasing what he said, that, uh, oh goodness, it just left me. <laughs> uh, the, um, Oh, how God's going to bring us through it, and that it, we're not going to starve. God, God's going to bring us through it, and but people do starve, and we do go hungry, but that's not what it's looking at. It's not this fleshly food; it's the spiritual food. That's what He's always going to provide for us, and so that's also what I thought about what He said last uh, week that when you go through the snow, you're going through that season, that cold season, but God's always there. He's still there. He, he's never wavering and he never fails. And that, uh, when it does get cold, we can go and get that garment that he has, that he gives, you know, that it couldn't separate, but it was in one piece and wrap up in that thing. And the swollen clothing that wrap, wraps you up and it does, it gives you Warm. It comes close your jaw to Christ, the Son, the one that He is. And so those those winters, those problems, those trials, false teachings that are out there that they're trying to steal away from you know, into the church and, and push you away. Those why, things are, and why does it not affect you? She's not afraid of it for all oh, her household, you know, has it's got the scarlet out there. Okay. Well, we've seen it. And yeah. you know, he, he talks about that eating. You know what goes in, but if it starts on belly, I got a little bit of wine yeah. that can cure it. Yeah. It's not even, not even. I don't think for just the warmth. It's also for the protection. You know, yeah, just what it is. Your yeah. protection. So. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes three, we stated mm -hmm. this: to everything there, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for the winter yeah. that we go through. <coughs> our season. There's a reason. Uh, Kathy always said like this: there's some things, some assemblies. That you're not going to change until people literally die. Yeah. They're not going to change. They 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 love the winner. They love death. But the winner has to kill. And the winter the time it dies back. Okay, but there's good things of the snow. The snow brings nitrogen to your plants. It's full of nitrogen. And if you know, and and when he come, and it, the, the the purpose that God is, if you're looking at it spiritually, the the reason those things 
uh, and we, we're not afraid of them because we've got the warmth, we've got the protection, we've got the covering, we've got Christ. She, 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 her household has got the scarlet garment, so therefore she's got all that protection and there's some good things going to come out of that. The winter, the snow, there's still going to be some good things come out of it. Where was that in Ecclesiastes? Where was that in Ecclesiastes? That was Ecclesiastes. Three. Three. Okay. Ecclesiastes I was going to ask first verse. Okay, I was going to ask you where that was because I'm like, I knew. I was thinking that same <laughs> section when talking about the seasons. He's, he wrote a song on that, didn't he? Wasn't a good band, but that's okay. <laughs> it's just what I heard. I, I wasn't a fan of the Beatles, so. <laughs> or the birds. The birds. Birds. <laughs> birds and cows or something. <laughs> anything else? All right, we'll pick up uh, anything else on 21 next time and 22 and see how far we get. Some covering, some tapestry. I can go right back to Ezekiel 16, the tapestry and stuff and something like that. Silk and purple. Yeah. In, in a sense, he said, because uh, it comes off of on Bill kind of wear. But there is that we are always prepared. No matter what comes, if you're a Christian, well, you're prepared. Because you know why? 